Hey guys, this is like take 43 of this tutorial, but oh well, let's get started. Um, as you can see, it's a little guessing game written in Python, and it's pretty much a beginner tutorial. I mean, you'll be able to follow along if you've just downloaded Python. I mean, it shows a couple of intermediate concepts, but that's okay. So first, I'm going to import the random module so that we can make a random integer so for the user to guess so we got our random module and then we're gonna go ahead and make that I can't type on I can never type and talk on on camera so we're gonna do answer equals random dot rand and it even gives us our little hints rand int and then for the uh, for our parameters, we're going to do 1 and 10, just for testing purposes. That means it's going to choose a number at random between 1 and 10. And then we're going to go ahead and do a while loop so that the person or the user can guess over and over rather than just having them guess once. They can guess infinite number of times until they get it right. So we're going to do while true, which pretty much a true while loop is it'll keep going until it's broken and when you want to break it you write break that's the beauty of Python so we're gonna do take some raw input and I'll explain this in a sec alright what this is is it's gonna prompt with nothing which is okay because I mean if you really want to put instructions you can be like type uh, number but you'll see that that gets redundant and it'll come up every single time the loop runs so I like it better if it's just blank okay so this it's gonna prompt them with nothing but as soon as you uh, as soon as they enter something it's gonna take that input it's gonna turn it into an integer which is what we want because it is a number game and that's gonna set to the variable of choice so we want to see if this choice is Let's, so first we'll start off and say if the choice is smaller than our answer, then we want our little code to print out too low. And then next we're going to do an else if, oops, not, it's else if, but it's l if is how the syntax is. And then so you got your first if then you're gonna have another if and you can have infinite of these else ifs that are written l if so else if that's really hard to say else if choice is bigger than answer you're gonna go ahead and say print out too high and then we're gonna have one more else if and then this is gonna be if the choice is equal to answer and then it's going to be break. All right, so let's go over this once more. So it's going to make it's going to make a random integer using this random module that we imported. And then while this is true, which is going to be true until they get the correct answer, in which case it'll break. It's going to go check if it's too small, say too low, check if it's too big, say too high. And the reason there's two of these, that's not a mistake. There's two because you uh Oops, ans answer. It's because it um, you don't want to set choice to answer. You want to check for truth, check for uh, equality between those these two variables. I just pointed at them with my fingers, but you can't see my fingers. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and... So this is pretty much, if you think about it, the only way that the user can get to this point in the code is if they were going to... Uh, if they got the correct answer because they'll be stuck in here going infinite infinite forever upon ever until they finally get the right answer and then it's gonna break so once they finally get the right answer we want it to say something like you got it Let's give them a little congratulatory message there and then that's pretty much all we need for this point in time we just want to say you got it good job you're awesome and then that's all we really need let's go ahead and run that real quick see how we like this yes I want to save it and then so it's it's one through five so I'm gonna start out with five that's too high 
three is too high. So let's see one. One was right. I got it. So let's say we want to add a little bit more functionality to our functionality to our program. We want to step it up a notch, show people how cool we are. Let's go ahead and add a time functionality to it so that people can the person using your program will be like, oh, I guessed the number in 22 seconds. Let's see if I can do it in 21 seconds. So we're going to import our time, and then we want it to take the answer. Let's say, take our first time measurement right here, take our second time measurement right here, and then we're going to see the difference, print out the difference. So first we're going to do time one for our starting time, and we're going to set that to time dot time. That's pretty redundant little statement there but that's what it is time two equals time dot time don't forget your parentheses even though there are no parameters you still have to have the parentheses in there just for syntax I guess I don't really know why they just go there and then we're gonna take our total time and we're gonna equal that to so what if you think about it what we want to do is take up here time minus, no, we want to take this time minus that time, which will give us this time. It's just a little bit of, a little bit of math there. Time two minus time one, and then that's going to be set to equal our total time. But because an interesting thing here is that because um, the way the time function works is it comes out as like, so say it was two point something seconds would come out as like 2.5437 big old huge ugly decimal point which we don't want so we're going to go ahead and chop that off by using integer just int put that in parentheses and then because we're going to print it out we've got to put that into a string and not print it out like a printer print it out like this and we're going to say it took you add a little plus sign total time add a little plus sign and space seconds and in things like this make sure you put a space there and a space there because or else it'll come out like it took you and then when there's not a space in between that and your uh, variable it ends up just looking weird so don't forget your spaces don't forget your plus signs and make sure that's a string and then let's go ahead and see how this works maybe this will be a little bit cooler than the first time Oops, source must be saved. Yes, that's okay. Let's go four, too high, one. And that was incredibly fast. I somehow got lucky, but it took me three seconds. That's good to know. Let's see if I can do it in two seconds. You know, I can try to beat myself if I'm a competitive person, beat my friends if we want to sit around at the computer all day. And that's pretty much that. All right, so one last thing is that one through ten might not be the most exciting thing in the world. So we want to make this really fun and exciting. So we're going to set that to 1 and 1,000 to give us a little bit bigger number. Okay, so let's go ahead and try, since it's 1 through 1,000, we're going to try 500. 500 is too high, 300. Too low, 400. Too high, 350. 375. 390. 380. 385 is too high three eighty three three eighty four is gonna be our answer and let's see how long it took us thirty nine seconds that was pretty bad but I mean that's you know kinda of fun you can see if you can beat yourself and you can know that you wrote this game all by yourself you programmed it you know how it works you didn't have to go out and pay Infinity Ward. <laughs> and that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know what you guys want to see. And I might, if I ever get my website up and running, I'm going to put this in the, uh, like, copy and paste it so you guys can go look at it. Um, maybe I'll just put it in the description for now. And that's about it. Thank you guys, and have a good one.